Hello, Frontline. This is Val Sewell. Uh, I wanted to spend some time talking about clinical trials. This is a presentation that my coworkers actually wrote, Angie and Sarah Smith, um, who are clinical research staff here at Philadelphia Fight. Uh, but I've adapted this presentation for Frontline. So this presentation is going to cover clinical trials. What's the history? What are they? How are they designed? What are the risks and benefits? Uh, and so, in short, and part of the reason why I'm addressing this in class is uh, because of this. This is a Time Magazine cover that uh, sort of uh, sums up, I think, the conventional wisdom on clinical trials. That is, that medical testing has turned millions of us into human guinea pigs. Um, that is, like, creatures without options or choices or self-determination. Um, and I think that this sort of uh, conventional wisdom on clinical trials is wrong, but I know that it's broadly felt in the community, and so it's important to address the reality of that. Um, at what fuels this view of clinical trials? Um, well, there's a, there's a pretty reasonable acknowledgement in that conventional wisdom that there are unknown consequences to participating in clinical trials. Um, there's risk involved. Um, there's also the sort of like dirty laundry uh, of medical mistrust, um, the sort of uh, mistrust of uh, big research institutions or medical providers. Um, there might be other stuff, uh, and I will ask in the uh, class activities uh, what what else you think might might fuel this idea of clinical trials. Um, and med medical mistrust has a basis in reality. Um, the Tuskegee syphilis experiment is probably the most prominent example of this. Um, and for those who aren't aware, the Tuskegee syphilis experiment was a study designed, it started in 1928, I believe, um, and lasted until 1972. So it was one of the longest lasting um, quote unquote research studies um, uh, that this country has seen. And what happened in the Tuskegee syphilis experiment um, was they, they took a group of um, you know poor black, mostly sharecroppers um, who had syphilis and the study started before there was an effective treatment for syphilis. When the study started, they um, treated syphilis with things that didn't really work to treat syphilis. But in the middle of the study, after 1945, we knew that you could treat syphilis with penicillin, and these men were denied that treatment. Um, the point of the treatment was to see the end of end stage syphilis in black men to see if it was different than in white men, and Really, the study didn't find anything useful, um, but it lasted for decades um, and caused untold pain and suffering and definitely new infections um, of syphilis, although there's no credence to the belief that they actually gave men syphilis. They certainly didn't help protect the those men's partners and loved ones. So... Um, you know, this is just one example, probably the most prominent, and it didn't even get apologized for until Bill Clinton was president. So, um, you know, medical mistrust is real, um, and the history of medical mistrust and kind of abuse of people at the hands of medical establishments obviously influences clinical trial en enrollment. It also influences engagement in medical care. A belief in prevention messages, um, social service relationships, probably other things that aren't on this slide. Um, there are a lot of ways in which big institutions cannot be trusted, and there are some ways in which big institutions can be trusted, but they don't, they aren't trusted. Um, so, a bit of history. Um, the, in 1906, the FDA was formed, the Food and Drug Administration, um, and they regulate the release of new health related products but it's actually there's a there's a long history of kind of mistakes and problems um, that led to the FDA being the way that it is now um, so this says before 1937 the effectiveness and safety of health related products did not need to be tested they the manufacturers only tested for flavor appearance and fragrance um, in what happened in 1937 was 
this elixir basically um, was used to treat strep infections, in, and it worked f okay in tablet and powder form, but then a scientist dissolved it in diethylene glycol to make liquid form of it, and that's actually antifreeze. So um, more than 100 people died. It caused changes in the FDA. 1938, Franklin Roosevelt signed the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act that drugs must be labeled with direction for safe use, um, and pre-market approval by FDA must be obtained for all new drugs. Required drugs, importantly, to be tested for safety, but not effectiveness. Um, they didn't have to prove their claims, but they just had to prove it wouldn't kill you. Um, more history. Uh, the Nuremberg War Crime Trials coming out of World War II um, you know, we know that Nazi doctors performed horrific experiments on human subjects. Twenty-three doctors were indicted for medical war crimes, and this led to the creation of what's called the Nuremberg Code. Um, this is the sort of most important sentence in it. The voluntary consent of the human subject is absolutely essential, um, but there are actually ten rules to the Nuremberg Code, and I can um, provide those in the uh, if you contact me, you really want them. Uh, the Declaration of Helsinki in 1964. Um, the bottom line here is the the um, not just the voluntary consent of the human subject, but doctors must keep the safety of patients of the utmost importance, um, and that the importance of the research, the the benefit to humans, has to be greater than the risk that the humans face. Um, who might be in the trial. So um, is, this also covers consent again. Subject can withdraw permission at any time throughout the course of clinical trials, and the investigator can, can discontinue the clinical trial if it's found to be harmful to the subject. Um, so the FDI guidelines were revised to reflect these, um, and before any drug is marketed, after, after the revision of the FDA guidelines, drugs have to be tested for safety and effectiveness and approved by the FDA. Um, it also stipulated that preclinical studies must be conducted on non-human subjects, that is, animals. Um, so other guidelines um, that have been established since then are that um, reporting on all side effects, what's known in the industry is serious adverse effects, or SAEs, um, or other data um, that relates to safety and effectiveness of drugs already on the market can be used. Um, use of investigational drugs only permitted if records are kept, reports are made, um, and that th those things can be accessed at a later time. Um, and so this really helps to govern and influence how clinical trials are conducted today. Um, so clinical trials, when we say clinical trials, we really mean it's related to clinical care, m medical care, and that is specifically research study in human volunteers to answer specific health questions. Um, there's no way, if, if a medication is for a human, it has to be done there have to be safety trials done in non-humans, but that doesn't really answer, is it going to work for humans? Um, so uh, there are specific questions, if a drug works, how well it works, um, what are safety issues and side effects, and how to use it, and how it works best. So dosing and kind of, to is it taken with water, with food, without food, etc. Um, and there are these, the clinical trials are conducted in a controlled way to determine their safety and effectiveness. Um, so a number of different groups sponsor clinical trials, independent physicians, um, National Institute of Health, NIH, CDC, pharmaceutical companies, medical institution, um, AIDS World and other private groups. The AIDS Clinical Trials Group is uh, one of the big ones. And um, all clinical trials have to have both a, a protocol um, that is approved by a review board, Institutional Review Board, or IRB, um, and they also have to have very specific inclusion criteria and exclusion criteria. So inclusion criteria are obviously um, what you have to have in order to participate, and exclusion criteria are factors that would prohibit someone from participating. So that's as much time as I have right now. I'm going to see you after the jump.